Hey guys, Aaron here. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how I replace uh, wheel studs on a vehicle. Now here we have a front wheel stud on a Nissan Frontier and it's stripped out. Looks like it's been over torqued. This lug, um, lug nut just doesn't want to go on anymore. We're also going to be doing a Chevy Silverado later in the video and I'm going to show you guys how to replace a wheel stud on the rear of a vehicle, uh, which is a little bit differently. So let's go ahead and go over the parts and tools we're going to need to get the job done. So the first and most obvious thing that we're going to need is a new stud. Um, different trucks take different studs. They're not universal, so make sure you get the correct size and part for your application. And of course, we're going to need a new um, lug nut as well. Don't try to reuse a lug nut if it's been damaged. Chances are you're going to damage the threads on your new stud, and you're going to have to redo the job. So go ahead, pick yourself up a new stud or two, um, a new nut or two. And then also, this little tool here is really handy for pressing in the new studs. These studs are pressed in to the hub, and you can see the splines. Um, they seat into the hub, and it takes a little bit of force to get them in. This tool is super handy. Um, I'll put a link in the description of where you can purchase it. I got a couple of these in my toolbox. It makes the job go by quick. Um, if you don't have that, there's another way that you can press them in using a couple washers, um, using your lug nut, and a little bit of grease. I'll go over that method. It works. It's not as quick, and um, I really don't you know, prefer it, especially if you have the tool. So let's go ahead and get to the first thing that we need to do to replace it. So the first thing we're going to do is gotta, we, we got to remove the wheel, um, jack up your vehicle using a properly rated jack and jack stand. Let's go ahead and take these lug nuts off. Alright, and after that's complete, we're going to have to remove our caliper and caliper mounting bracket. Now to do that, we're going to have to remove two caliper mounting bolts, um, one on the top and one down below. On this vehicle, I'm using a 14 millimeter socket to do that. Once those bolts are removed, we can just simply take our caliper and set it aside. Now we're going to remove the brake pads. Now we're going to go ahead and remove our caliper mounting bracket now that we got the brake pads out of the way. Uh, using a 19 millimeter socket, we're going to go ahead and remove two bolts that are on the back of the spindle. Uh, one up and one is down. Now that our caliper mounting bracket's out of the way, we can remove our rotor. Now that our ro rotor is removed, we can go ahead and remove our bad wheel stud. Most vehicles have an indent on the spindle um, where you can press the uh, stud out and it won't contact anything. Sometimes you'll have to uh, cut a heat shield. I remember on Ford Flex and um, like a, a Honda Accord, um, there's really no access to remove the wheel stud unless you cut or grind a little indent onto the heat shield or spindle. Now by taking a hammer, we can go ahead and just start hitting the stud until we drive it all the way out. There we have it. Now when we put our new one in, we can go ahead and pull on as hard as we can. We're going to install our handy little installer tool. And now we're gonna be using a new wheel stud to tighten down and press the stud into the uh, hub assembly. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna tighten down this uh, lug nut until this little cap becomes even and fully mated with the flange of our hub. That way you know, we know that the lug is fully seated. There we have it. 
Now this truck also has a broken wheel stud. It's a 2014 Chevy Silverado, and this is on the rear. And you can actually see it snapped when somebody went to torque it on. So we're pretty much gonna have to remove the wheel and the brakes, uh, just like the first Frontier we worked on. And then we're gonna have to work around the parking brake assembly to get that stud out. All right, so now that the wheel's off, let's go ahead and remove the caliper, brake pads, and caliper mounting bracket. We're gonna be using a 13 millimeter socket and a 13 16 to hold the slide pin while we remove the bolt. Next, we need to go ahead and remove both bolts that hold on the caliper mounting bracket using an 18 millimeter wrench. Now that our brakes are off, we can go ahead and remove our rotor. Now that our rotor is off, we have access to remove our wheel studs. Just like the first uh, truck, we're going to go ahead and take a hammer and drive out this stud. There's that. Now here's our new stud. We're just going to go ahead and insert it. You may have to turn the flange a little bit in order to um, remove this parking, get the parking brake out of the way. Uh, now we can take some washers and I'm just going to put a little dab of grease on the washer. And we're going to do about three washers. So the light film helps the washers move so we don't damage the flange on our hub here. Now since this vehicle does have aftermarket um, lug nuts, I actually went down and I bought a uh, lug nut from an older Chevrolet truck and we're going to use this to press on um, our wheel stud. I'm not going to use this, I really don't want to damage this. i um, going to have to probably go to some discount tire or something to get a replacement from this. Most auto parts stores don't, replace the, uh, don't ha carry this type. So let's go ahead and tighten down our lug nut. And now we can go ahead, put a socket on here, and press our stud all the way on. And we know it's fully seated. There we are. Now from here we can go ahead and put our braking system back on and everything's good to go. Hope this video has helped you out, maybe gave you a couple quick tips on how to do the job easily. Don't forget to check out the link in the description for where you can purchase this part for a good price. Thanks for watching as always guys, see you next time.